Good day. Hello. So, John, I like this recipe because, first of all, it seemed really simple, but then it has a unique story behind it, too. Like, yeah. yeah, so my great grandmother, Hargraves, she and, and she was, oh my, as far as being a cook, several of the recipes were passed down to generations. But this is one of my favorites, it, uh, called Monkey Punk. And yeah, like you said, with the ingredients, part of the what makes Monkey Punk great is the simplicity of it. Um, myself and my, uh, some of my family, we have searched the internet high and low to try to see if anybody else made this, uh, where it may have came from. And as far as we can tell, um, my theory is this was something that Grandma Hargraves just you know, raised kids during the depression. And my theory is stuff she just threw together and, and came up with and has been- Well, it's, to me, it just seems like cheeseburgers, but you can make a lot of them quick, like, Quickly and easy. It's been compared like, to cheeseburger, uh, pizza bread, meatloaf on bread. You know, there's it, it, it really is kind of its own thing. Um, yeah. Uh oh. What? Uh, but he is breaking up. I wonder who's breaking up. Uh, am I breaking up? Yeah, your sound a little bit when you stand back. It's like when you're close, it cl seems clear. So maybe who knows? Okay. Zoom sometimes, if the sound gets all weird, it mutes things. Um, why do you think it's called Hunky Punk? Well, my, um, the Hargrave side of uh, that family was uh, from the Czech Republic. And so, you know, that was when a lot of the Eastern European immigrants were here in Southern Illinois back in that day. You know, everyone just called them by their, uh, basically, you know, had names for the different ethnic groups. And so they, and so that was, you know, again, I don't know the story of how that name came to be exactly. Yeah. In, in our family, we have a, a recipe we call glop and nobody knows where it came from, but like everybody in our family knows what it is. Yeah. And it just like, I guess someone called it it. And from then on, we were calling it that, and only our family has any idea what it is. It's basically just a stew, but we call it glop because you just kind of glop everything together. We think so. I don't know if grandma came up with it or um, so. so I, yeah, it's uh, definitely you know, mom used to make it when I was a kid, and my brother and I we would just about fight over it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so let's go over the recipe. I mean, it's it's quite literally stuff that's in most American kitchens. I mean, a lot of people yeah. keep these ingredients around, except the do you have to have like fresh bread or like how how old can the bread be? I mean, I, I bought this yesterday. Um I I would assume that it would be okay if, if you had the bread for a few days. I I prefer to, you know, use barely fresh bread. That's the way I've always done it anyway. But yeah, if you bought a loaf of bread and then, you know, refrigerated it or froze it, you know, for a period of time, I, I would imagine. I mean, you're baking it, so you could probably do older bread. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what I've got is your, like, big Italian or French bread loaf. Mm -hmm. Right, um, eggs, ground beef, cheese, salt and pepper, and ketchup. And you included you need uh aluminum foil, yes, and that's, just, that's for simplicity and cleanup. Yes, all right, let's get cooking then. I all right, so the very first thing that I've uh, done is I preheated the oven to. 325 degrees. All right. Thank you for saying that. We always forget. I always forget to, <laughs> to preheat the oven. I don't know if mine came on. I don't think so. Start talking and I'll have to light it. Okay. So, um, 
And then what? what's next? What's next is we can take the bread and I have a knife here and we are going to slice the bread like so. I'll show you here. So I'm, best way to do it is I got it standing up here and I'm just going to start at the top. Work my way down here. This knife is not the greatest in the world, so it's taking me a moment, but I just about got it. There we go. Sometimes I turn off the gas. I live in such a small house, I tend to not like to leave the gas on even with the little pilot light. All right, cut the bread in half. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do next is take the aluminum foil, close my hair, and I think it's wide enough. I'm gonna take a piece of foil just a little bit longer than the length of the bread. So mine won't fit on the whole pan, so I'm gonna have to cut it down a little bit. Okay. Let's see here. Should I do it this way? And both, there'll be two pieces of foil and the bread is gonna sit on the foil like so. All right. And or while you're getting that, I'll go ahead and show you with the foil. I'm just gonna take the sides of it, kind of crinkle it up and basically making like a little boat around the bread. I don't think, I might have to use two pans. I got a teeny oven, so. Now did, and what a, and of course foil, around the bread, and it's gonna keep that bread with a nice uh, crisp texture. You're base. putting foil on the bottom and over the top of it? No, not over the top, but so I have it just on the bottom. Oh, okay. Here. And then like I said, I'm just kind of sort of rolling it up. Like I said, the foil is gonna be kind of, kind of like a little, what I, what I say is like a little boat. Yeah, so that, that'll make the bread really super crispy. Yes. Okay. And again, we'll leave the top of the bread exposed because we're going to be... How many people do you think like one loaf of bread like this would serve? It depends on the, uh, you know, the appetite of the person. Like I said, I... I can almost demolish a whole loaf of my own. Um, if, you know, like when mom would take, make one loaf, you know, and split it in half like this, um, my brother and I, we would, it, it, it would be wiped out that evening. Our family had something similar like this with, uh, Tortillas, just like flour tortillas, we'd call it. it was just like um, personal pizzas. Or... Now, the recipe from Grandma Hargraves that is actually my favorite is her made from scratch chicken and dumplings, but that's that would be we'll, a bit we'll have to have you come back on for that. Chicken and dumplings is a that that is not a, a simple recipe that oh, okay. takes a short amount of time. That's that's oh that's just about an all-day job. That's where you get the whole family around and it, all right. it was one of, you know, the story about those those dumplings. Um, when I was young, uh, mom did not well, mom didn't trust anyone in the kitchen, but she definitely didn't want me in the kitchen. I, I didn't I actually really, for the most part, taught myself to cook when I was older. But um, but I was 
told mom, like, you know, I, I really would love to have the recipe for the dumpling and what I was always told. And mom didn't have a recipe. Yeah. And finally, one day, I said, you know what? I'm going to sit down and write down what you do. And he showed me how to make the dumpling. And so she said, okay. And so she showed me and I wrote him down. And two months later, she died. Oh, wow. That was her last batch of dumplings. And I wrote down how she made them for that. Wow. Just like, that's like, I absolutely love cooking with grandmas because I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm passing on the tradition, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. The, the first time I made those dumplings, they were not exactly like mom's, but close enough, I started crying. <laughs> yeah. 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 So with the, am, am I making this right? Like, is it supposed to have a high lip or just a, like, am I making yeah. it too much, just, folding just, it in too much? That looks good to me overall. Like the, the lip does not have to be super high. As you can see, it's not oh, okay. perfect, nice and neat. There is one area where it looks like it kind of covers the top of the bread. Um, yeah. You do okay. uh, well, I just that. didn't know if it had to have a high lip to hold the stuff in, but it's mostly just get the bread crispy, right? Yeah, because once once you start putting stuff on the bread, and you'll see here in a minute, we're going to, you want the meat to be thin on top of the bread. So okay. you don't need the high lip to keep the contents on. And that is actually what I'm going to work on next is we're going to. So we don't, we don't cook the meat ahead of time. I was thinking we'd fry it and put it on there. No, I, okay. I put the meat on raw. And then it'll like spread at the end, and then it'll go in the oven and bake. Yeah, you don't have to cook it first. All right. I think mine are not as neat as yours, but I think, well, some of them. I don't have as much experience folding foil like you. So. All right. Now, I am going to start, I got a three pound hunk of beef here and I'm going to start off half of it will probably be enough. Um, I always like to have a little bit more than not enough just to be safe. And you know, you know, if you end up having some meat left, I've taken it and froze it and I could cook myself hamburgers or a little meat locally. Does it matter, you know, I know this uh, ground beef comes in different um, fat contents. Like what, 70? Yeah, this, I think this is 70, 30. Yes, or 73, 27. Um, I have never played around and bought leaner meat before. Um, to me, I, I would think the, the higher fat content would give it more flavor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be, be something that I try one of these times. And then I'm going to uh, crack two eggs in the meat. Oh, I just saw, let me see. I just saw an internet video. Let's see, where you just drop the egg right into the thing and you just pull the egg perfectly out. Did you see that? I don't, I don't think so. Huh? <laughs> just like, I tried it with a few of them. You just like throw it into a pan and you can just pull the egg right out and it's perfect. Hmm. <laughs> but it's just like all these years, I've been really careful. So I don't know. I, I've done it. I did it with four different eggs. Well, now six with these two and it worked. So absolutely no shells. So, all right, two eggs. And then I'm, beef. Uh, All right. I'm just going to put some pepper on it. I don't, I never measure seasoning. I just, to me, it's intuitive. Um, I, you know, wanted to have flavor, but not be overwhelmed. Now, something that to me is kind of fun, whenever I make hunky punk or any of mom's recipes, which to me, mom's recipes are safer. You don't mess with them. And whenever I would make stuff, I'm going to hunky pumping one of them. 
my dad would be like, why don't you put in garlic salt? Well, you know, you should, you should put peppers in the meat. Like, no, go away. Like, <laughs> the simplicity of Hunky Punk is what makes Hunky Punk Hunky Punk. And then the fun part, we get to mix the meat up and get our hands dirty. So all that's in here is the two eggs and just a little bit of black pepper. And salt. Oh, I forgot the salt. Let's see, I think I got a big thing of salt. Hang on. Close by. All right. Meat massage time. Now, next thing I do is I'll grab a small little clump of meat at a time and kind of mash it with my fingers. Again, you want the stem. And I'm just going to place it on top of the exposed part of the loaf of bread. Okay. So you're just kind of making it really thin. Yes. Okay. If, it's, if it's not thin, it's going to take it. It's going to take a while to cook. My eggs don't seem to be mixing in really well. So let's see here. It seems like it has a lot of eggs, just with those couple. So you're not like patting it out like a burger. You're at just putting it between your finger and your thumb and making it really thin. Okay. Then I don't know. Actually, when I'm done with this first loaf, I'll uh, I'll wash my hands, and get it closer to the camera. Because like, yeah, I'm used to when you have the meat where you pat it between your hands to make a burger, but that would be a thick one. Because this is, yeah, it comes out pretty thin thin that way. Just like. But I wonder, I feel like I've had something similar to this with um, an Italian dish that used sausage like that. Hmm. But, that has to be curious now. It's like really sticking to it's just like, uh, don't worry, everybody. This is this is how ladies get really, really nice, soft hands, right? <laughs> I don't know. But it's like, it's so simple. Mm-hmm. Trying to see if my technique of match. So I've been doing between my fingers like this, John. But okay, I don't know. I don't know if that's thin enough. If... I'm gonna try it that way. I think, of course, I'm. Mean... It's a really big piece, but so. Yeah, if I do it through my th thumbs like this and just spin it, I can get it pretty. So can you uh, just maybe give a measurement like a quarter of an inch, a half an inch, an eighth of an inch, just kind of swag it, if you will, to let me know how thick. If, if I were to take, I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know, like in inches, or any unit of measurement, what to recommend, but I would say eighth of an inch, definitely no more than a quarter of an inch. So you want it to be thin. You're um, trying to make I, it as thin as possible, right? Because you're trying to stretch it for as many people. Yeah, well, and also um, you want it to cook in a reasonable amount of time too. And I, you know, I think it, the first time I made Hunky Punk, I, I was like, well, I'm a meat guy, I love meat, so I put that stuff on thick. It took a while to cook. I get 
just a little bit of extra thickness will add to the cooking time a lot. So that was that was my lesson in uh, you know I get down. So I'm gonna have a lot of meat left over. Well, yeah, and I, I like so with that meat when I have meat left over like that. Um, I I've saved you know put it in the freezer, wrapped up in aluminum foil, and then can always use it to something later. And what kind of cheese? What I didn't get the ingredients list. I must have been basin or something. Uh, oh, what kind of I just have regular uh, craft yellow singles. It's like these are what just like individual sliced. Yeah, and once I spread the meat on, well, actually after the meat, we'll spread the ketchup on top. Um, but then I'll show you what I do with the cheese. So. Yeah. I thought I was proportioning this out that it would have all the meat on all of it, but it looks like like. Lulu said, I'll have extra. Maybe I'll put it on a little pan and make a meatloaf while it, the oven's hot. Yeah. Extra. So I'll just show you real quick what my loaf looks like here. There you go. Like you're just trying to spread it on there as thin as possible. I don't have ketchup, so I am getting out my emergency fast food packets. <laughs> it's like I once I once read, uh, you know, I used to love reading recipe books and I read a recipe book. It was the poor students um, cookbook. And one <laughs> of them was how to make tomato soup. And it's like, save all your extra ketchup packets and fill up a pot. And that's your tomato soup. Gosh, I wish some of these had a Best Buy date, though. This one's really swollen and fat. I'm not using it. <laughs> oh, no, just like, I didn't know they went bad. Well, this one. I think all food goes bad. What is it when it goes from low elevation to high elevation that it's the air expands? So. Well, the, the air pressure, you know, up in the mountains is. Less. You know, that's like, um, like I've been in the car before going out to Colorado yep. and we're driving up to higher elevations, like you'll notice the bags of chips expanding. Yep, yep. <laughs> I lived in Moab for a while and yeah. Oh, okay. So how many packets of ketchup? <laughs> I'm just, just like, like as much ketchup as you want on it, I guess. I'm resisting the urge to throw onion on this. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that I won't. Yeah. I won't I agree with trying a recipe the way it's intended initially I, now I would I would say yeah if other people you know do do try onions and peppers but I, I don't know why part of me is kind of curious about that but then other part of me is like you know this is this is what I grew up on and it would be uh, tough for me to change it. But... Makes me wish I had craft singles. <laughs> like the real old style plastic cheese. Yep, I That's grew up on that. Just like definitely has it. Anybody who's grew up eating regular cheese would be like, that doesn't taste like cheese. But if you grew up on craft cheese, you had your own. But craft craft cheese and Velveeta cheese. So, so does yeah, Velveeta come in slices? Um, no. Oh. But I'm just saying, as far as unique weird flavors that people outside the U.S. would like think is really yeah. So I've got enough probably for left probably for two burgers, but I'll make like a mini meatloaf. Let's see. Yeah, I got a little bit of meat left over. I'll say I'm going to wash my hands real quick and I will be right back. Yeah, I think I've got enough space in the middle of this pan. But yeah, I guess I need to wash my hands too. Well, now I'm going to use this. 
Right. Put that in the center there. Okay, I believe St. Louis is basically like 200 feet above sea level. So compared to Pittsburgh, I think it's the same. Why these are all puffy, I'm not sure. They're bad, no? I'm a thinking, yeah. I'm afraid to open them, even. Well, especially tomatoes. Tomatoes. Ketchup doesn't go bad. It's vinegar based. They're probably puffy just because that's how they were packed to begin with. Oh, okay. So you think I should try them because seriously, this is like, I've never seen anything. I should do it over the sink though, because it may be a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, because that's a name brand. So they're going to use an appropriate amount of vinegar. <laughs> Ketchup is one of those you don't have to store in the fridge. It will never go bad. It's shelf stable forever, just like honey. But also tomato is one of those things that if you don't have the, the acid in it, you will get botulism. So that's where you oh. have to make sure there's enough lemon or vinegar in any tomato based. So obviously it's tomatoes first, then distilled vinegar, then high fructose corn syrup, then more yep. corn syrup, then salt. So I think it's well preserved. <laughs> yep. Between the vinegar, salt, and sugar. Yeah, I've never. So, all right. Up, oh, John got going, putting ketchup on. Huh? Let's see. What I've done is I've taken the ketchup and I just kind of squirted it up and down the loaf. Because what I'm going to do next, I got a spoon here, and I'm just going to spread that ketchup kind of thin over the top of the meat. Okay. So you don't try to spread it all over. You just... That actually speeds it up by just putting a, a double row in the center and then spread it. So otherwise, yeah, this is definitely a recipe of stretching food because if you spread, if you actually squirted this ketchup over, over everything, it would be a lot more ketchup. Huh? Yeah. All right. And you probably want to have this pretty thin also because to allow the meat to cook if it was a thicker. Yeah. So, all right, Lulu, do you have your oven warming to 325? Oh, actually it's on 375 because I had to toast up my bread. I bought it partially cooked. Oh, okay. I'm kind of curious about it turned out. I, that's one of those things. It's, it's different. I never tried it, but that might turn out well. Yeah, I think this um, is one of those ones that, if you had like older bread, you wouldn't even have to put the foil on it. It'd already be kind of crunchy. You could use some old old bread, and then the the juices from the meat would soften the center. So the first one I did, I put a lot more ketchup than. Then I tried to use less on the other ones to see how well it'll come out. So he's a minute ago talking about different cheeses, and I thought I'd share a funny story real quick. So my uh, my dog, uh, or you know, Duke, he uh, he his one of his favorite treats is cheese, right? And one time when Brendan, my partner, and I were shopping and we're you know saving money on groceries, we bought imitation cheese. And so I bring it home, and later that night, I thought, oh, I'll give Duke a treat. So I gave the cheese to Duke. He, uh, he sniffed it, went, you know, huffed real loud, and walked off. <laughs> right. Uh, that, that's something about the dog caught on and was like, no, I'm too good for this. <laughs> and what kind of cheese was it again? It was some sort of cheap imitation cheese. Okay. That's funny. So what I've done, actually, I'm going to get this started. So I can talk to you. But the uh, cheese, I'm just opening them. And what I'm doing with the cheese here is just going to split the piece in half. 
And then I'll show you here in just a moment. I'm placing it on the local bread. So I'm leaving little gaps between the piece of cheese because later when this is done, that's where you'll slice it at. This first time gap. I, speaking of funny story, first time I ever did this, I tried to eat the thing without opening it. I didn't realize it had a cover on it. <laughs> I don't remember, I was a kid, but it's a story told in our family. So you don't put the whole piece, again, stretching it out. You're just cutting it in half or three? Well, you can if you want, you know, uh, do the cheese, slice of cheese in thirds. Um, so how I, much do you want to stretch out your? Yeah. And you'll see once it's done and I cut slices to eat, uh, those gaps between the cheese will be where I cut. So. Um, Scoop some of these up just a little bit so that way. And um, I've used um, so this loaf, I've used four pieces of cheese to make eight strips of cheese on it. Well, I cut them in half, and three fits like the four. I feel like you're squishing it on more. Yeah. And you can actually, what I did a minute ago uh, is as I was putting the cheese on here, originally uh, seven strips of cheese were going to fit. And I kind of wanted to even number on here, you know. So I did scoot them a little bit closer together so that I could get that uh, eighth strip of cheese on there. How much do you think this whole recipe costs? Mm -hmm. Do what? How much do you think this recipe costs to make approximately? I mean, we still have half the meat and, you know, so, I mean, if you bought a dozen eggs and a whole thing of meat, you still have enough to make a whole nother one. Oh yeah, there's really the only thing I would need to buy to, you know, make even more is just another loaf of bread. So any idea approximately what it costs to make? Uh, off the top of my head, I think. It seems like a really, really cheap and you could yeah. see quite quite a few quite a few kids it would be less than fifty dollars for sure um to be honest when i when i was shopping i just grabbed the stuff um, let's see 20 i'd say 25 bucks because your your most expensive thing is meat i mean and you know if you have ketchup and salt and pepper all you're doing is really buying what three ingredients? Meat, cheese, and eggs. So, all right. Is that it? Yeah. What do you think of? I have my extra, extra bit of meat there in the center to make a little meatloaf. And so, how long do you normally cook it for? Um, I'll put it on and check it in 45 minutes. Okay. So. 45 minutes? Yeah. Because yeah. it's at a low temperature, yeah? So this is what is getting ready to go in the oven right now. All right. And do you, oh, let me wait until you're done. Oh, wait, yeah, set my timer. <laughs> so.
Now, did you, was this served with anything or? Um, let's see here. All right, got my timer going. Yeah, because Lulu as an adult here, she's going to figure out what kind of drink to go with it. <laughs> Beer. Um, so my cheese, because it was the only thing that was already sliced, is um, Munster. Uh-oh. So that's kind of gooey. That's going to be a completely different taste. Yeah, but it's a real mild flavor. I mean, there's not a lot of flavor to Munster, and it's a kind of a softer cheese. So I figured mm -hmm. it's the closest thing, other than mozzarella, which seems way too Italian for this. <laughs> Just like... Um... John, when when this was served, was it served with like like always a certain drink or a, a certain a something else, or there was no consistency? No, there was no no other item as far as food served with it. Um, as far as the drink, me personally, um, I always like to drink a glass of milk with this. Uh, but then again, I like to drink a glass of milk with a lot of different things I eat. <laughs> Just like, yeah. I was just thinking if you had a bunch of kids, like what would you add with this to, you know, um, stretch the meal even further? But yeah. Um, yeah, when, well, yeah, when I, when I was a kid, you know, I would, you know, just the hunky punk itself and, and a glass of milk, that was enough to make me. That was enough to make me happy as a kid. It's still, there you still go. Make me happy. <laughs> and was there a preferred time of the day? Was this always a lunch, a dinner? Uh... This was typically supper. You know, I, after school, after mom got home from work, you know, she she would make it. Okay. And what's the story? I'm sorry if you're repeating yourself, but what's the story of the name Hunky Punk? Just like, just like the fam family started calling it that. Yeah. Nobody, nobody knows for sure. Yeah, my my great grandma died when I was three years old, so I I barely remember her. Um, but she, yeah, this her chicken and dumplings. Actually, the village that she lived in her whole life, which is about an hour north of here, Coelho, um, for a lot of years they used her recipe to have dumpling dinners as a fundraiser for the village. Oh, there you go. And, and where, so, where are you located? Um, I am in Carbondale, Illinois, okay. in the southern part, about five hours south of Chicago. So the part you drive of faster Southern than me. I always say six hours south. But. <laughs> six hours. The way I drive, it's five hours. But <laughs> it's like, but yeah, the, a lot of the church churches do do the chicken and dumpling dinners or. Um, what was another one? Corn casserole. Um, trying to think what else. Anyway, um, and so, all right. Does anybody have any questions? Because um, we'll take a picture after it comes out of the oven, and um, everybody will tell me what they think it tastes like. So, but any questions? Anybody? Anything final you want to say, John? Uh nothing i can think of like i said it's um and i don't know who all was around beginning or not but i'll, I'll say like myself and others in my family we we've looked around and don't know where this originated uh cannot find anyone else that makes it so as far as i'm aware uh this truly is a family dish and you know it's been been a favorite to uh, oh goodness I think I know who, uh, who just got in the chat there. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a family favorite. It's brought joy to myself and others in the family. And so I'm Thank you for sharing your family, fa family joy and, you know, like unique recipe because it's, um, if, if we don't share, it just, it brings us together. Like, yeah. people. Yeah. I do I, I have, have a, a I do have a question about more about the cooking since we're since we're shutting this off. What is it supposed to look like when it's done? Because my bread's a lot smaller, so I'm thinking mine's going to be done before the 45 minutes. 
Plus, it, my oven may not have cooled down. So what are we looking for is just the meats cooked and the cheese is melted and then? That's mainly what you're looking for. Yeah, what I'll do when I take it out is I'll cut into the meat and make sure that it's cooked well. And then one, you know, as long as there's no uh, pink in the meat, then yeah, it'll be ready to eat. Yeah. Cool, okay. And did you, have you ever made it without the foil around it? I never have, no. Yeah. I, I, I definitely could see how it'd make it nice and crispier that way. Yeah. So, um, I, I love learning new little tricks and tips because you, if we read this recipe and then you didn't show us how to roll that around the top and make the boat, I would have just thought you put the foil on the pan and that just makes easy cleanup. You just take yeah. it, out, you know, but um, yeah, thanks for that little trick. All right. Any other questions? Stick around and chat as we do every week and let's talk about food of the world. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to be listening, but I'm going to watch these real quick. All right.